Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's live watercolor session. I'm Sarah Giese. I'm an artist, and I'm a wife, and I'm a mom. And we decided to do these watercolor sessions um, to put some beauty in the world during this time. So there's always beauty in the world. There's always something to see that that is going to be beautiful. And we can be part of that, putting it into the world and focusing on it. <coughs> yep, that's not a corona cough. <laughs> Anyway, oh, we're gonna, today we're going to learn about um, flowing this watercolor paper and paint all over this little dog. We'll be here for one hour. We're going to, all you're going to need is to have your watercolor paper and your watercolor paints and your watercolor brushes or any other brush that you have and some water. So if you have this kind of paint palette, that's great. We decided when we were going to do these sessions we thought well what does everybody have in their stash of craft supplies probably one of these so <laughs> we decided to use watercolor so gather your things and um, once you have them together we'll get started start painting this little dog let's get started okay so this is a little Boston Terrier somebody was asking specifically for that so we I looked around and I saw they're so cute. I thought I could do something like that. So this little dog, he's kind of, she looks sad. I think it's a her because I put little eyelashes on. Kind of, I don't know if it's a sadness or if it's a curiosity maybe. Let's say curiosity, right? Um, yeah, it'll be fun. Okay, so if you have these watercolors, this kind of watercolor, or if you have my kind, or if you have liquid kind, all of that works just fine. The colors we're going to be using are uh, purple, like a lavender purple, and a darker purple, and maybe a dark pink if you have a dark like fuchsia color. Um, yeah, if you notice, all of his her little um, fur areas are you know shades of that purpley color, and then we have a little bit of orange and a little bit of blue. So it's kind of a turquoise blue, so depending on what kind of blues you have. If you don't have all the exact colors that I have, choose to make them a different color. You know, could be any old color. Really, they're usually black and white, right? So yeah, whatever color you're feeling. If you have a room that's orange and pink, you know, make one that match. Whatever. OK. You ready to get started? Everybody has the template on their watercolor paper. The template link is in the comments below this video, or there's an album on my uh, Facebook page that has all the templates there. So you can grab that, print it out, copy it onto your water paper, uh, watercolor paper, however you can do that, through the copier, with uh, a light box, or with graphite paper, whatever you feel like you can do. Or just look at the painting and look at this template and use your mind's eye and draw it out yourself, freehand. You know, you can make your own little adjustments as you go if you do that. Like right now, I'm looking at this template here and I think, I don't think this little line looks quite right, so I'm gonna fix that. You know, just do whatever you're thinking might look a little bit better. You can do it. You have permission to do anything you want to with your art. There's a, there's a quote about art that um, great artists steal and mediocre artists copy or borrow. The borrow is the word. So you don't want to necessarily just borrow. You can steal this use it to make your own thing, okay? So we're practicing, we're using the, using things that I've made. I've been, look, I've been looking at images like crazy to get this image to come out of me. So uh, one of my favorite people that writes books about art says that it's like filling and stocking the pond, you know, like a stocking a pond where you're gonna go fishing. And it's almost like you, 
You have to put images in. You have to put beauty in. You have to listen to music. If you're gonna, if you're gonna write music, you have to listen to a lot of it. If you're gonna make paintings, you gotta look at a lot of them. You gotta look at the the real thing. Look at other people's art. Stock the pond, and then when you go fishing, you're gonna pull something out that's new and fresh. Okay. Okay. So let's get started. If you have your template on your watercolor paper, you are ready to rock. Okay, I'm going to use a number seven paintbrush. If you have any old paintbrush, it's going to be fine. Um, truly, I know we all want to use the right tool for the right job. That's what my dad would always say. He was a Marine, and that was how things roll. Um, and that's true. But in this case, paintbrushes, it's easier if they're good watercolor brushes but you can use other ones. We're all in COVID, you know, mode. So you have what you have, okay? All right, we're gonna go in, first of all, with purples to do this outline color here. We'll do all the purples. We'll go in first with this kind of lavender purple, and then we'll add in some of the darker purple and some of the fuchsia. And then, as we're done, once we're done with that, then we'll kind of go in with these other colors and do some highlighting. Once that's dry, then we'll add the, add the eyes and the details, okay? That's kind of the, the scope of the thing here. All right, so going in with purple. We're gonna use a lot of water. As you can tell, it's kind of flowing around. We're gonna add water to the paper before we even put paint on this little Boston Terrier. And you just paint around with water. Paint around with water. I want you guys to um, know that my son, John Parker, is my tech today. Say hi to JP. JP, say hi to everybody. Hello. <laughs> He's doing a good job. All right, so once I have water all over that, I'm gonna go in with my purple. I'm gonna just set that in there. Just let it flow around in the water. I wanna have these colors really mix in, really blend. So I'm just gonna let it be very watery. Okay. Oops, don't want it to go in his eye. We're gonna go around the eyes. And down in here, some purple there too. So Boston Terriers, are they from Boston? Jape, you wanna look that up? Did you look it up? Yeah, they're from Boston. There's. It's kind of like convoluted history. Oh. It's like people are, took credit for the breed. I see. So, yes, so they are from Boston, but I don't know who first bred them. Oh, I see. There's a lot of people like taking credit for it. Mm -hmm. Interesting. When did they like breed them like this? Do they have a purpose? I don't think they would be like hunters. I don't, I mean. Terriers are really smart, but. Yeah, but I don't think it would be for hunting. I don't think so. At all. <laughs> it doesn't seem like that it. Dog could, I don't think it's going <laughs> to do anything. Hmm. Do you have a feeling about those dogs? <laughs> okay, I'm going in with a darker purple here, and I'm just going to add, ooh, it's very blue purple. That was not what I was looking for. I reached for the wrong one. Let's see if I can get that out. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, where's the purple I used? This one? Yeah, I think that was it. Yep. That was it. So are they an old breed? Does it say anything else about them? I'm just blending 
this dark in with the other color, just so that it's all different shades of the color. The Boston Terrier breed originated around 1875. Hmm. In Boston. In Boston. Was it like one of the rich people dogs? It seems like that. Doesn't it? Yeah. Because Boston at the time probably was pretty a bustling city, I would think. Okay, just going in, dropping this color in along, just letting it flow around. I don't want it to have any lines, but just letting the different purples mix. See, I like this when it starbursts like this. See how when we put water in, it kind of like disperses out and lets those cool things happen with the paint. Let them happen. We don't want to be controlling at all. It's a mixture, right? Art. Maybe your mind. Have what you think you want it to look like, and then, then what happens? Sometimes it's clearly exactly what you were trying to do. And as you get control over it, it more and more it becomes that, right? But I feel like the fun part of it is letting it happen. Letting it be a little bit of mystery. All right, going in, mixing this purple around. Hope your Friday's going well. It's a rainy day here, so I was out um, looking at my garden area. Usually I plant a garden, and this year I'm going in with fuchsia now just to blend that even more pinky color in. Anyway, I usually have a garden. Last year we were out of town so much that I really didn't um, tend it very well and it didn't really go well. I feel like in California and even in, we lived in Dallas for a while, our gardens really thrived, but I don't know, here we have a lot of deer and a lot of, we kind of live out in the moonies and or maybe possums get the, get the stuff, I don't know, but a lot of things just don't grow very well. Anyway, so I kind of didn't plan this year very much, but um, I was out there today just looking around and like the squash came back, the lettuce has come back, the carrots come back, like there must have been extra seeds that hadn't um, germinated last year or something, but yeah, so stuff is starting to grow. I did put a couple of potatoes in there a couple months ago and they're starting to grow. So it's kind of fun to watch, watch things just kind of come back. <laughs> no matter what, gardens just make me, it feels like it's miraculous. <laughs> it feels like magic. I'm like, really? How does that happen? I put a seed in the ground and vegetables are coming out. <laughs> it's amazing. Okay, still putting different colors, all kind of mixing in. Now this is one of those paintings that if you don't trust yourself, it's gonna be frustrating, you know? And trusting yourself takes some practice, so that's okay. But I don't wanna frustrate you, but I do want you to know that you, the more you do it, the, the l less hard it is to know this is where I want this color. Hmm, maybe I'll try this. And usually thinking about it too much is, is the culprit. <laughs> That's usually the problem. So just let, let your body just flow around and make decisions. Just go around his eye and make sure that that part is 
open, but other than that, you have, you have a lot of freedom to just put it in however, and let it flow around. And if cool things are happening, like if you look in here, I don't know if you can see that very well, but see how that is? That's so cool right in there. Don't cover it up. Once those kinds of things happen, you just like love them, let them be. A lot of times it happens when you have, wa have paint on there and you, then you add water to it. Just kind of lets it flow around a little bit. All right. I think I'm about done putting these colors on. It's fast, right? <laughs> Half of the time is putting the, the frame down, you know, right? Drawing the template. That's like anything in life. The foundation is really the the most important. <laughs> we can have fun just coloring in. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that for now. Okay, so the inside of these little spaces, I put a little bit of pink, but mostly uh, orange in here and a little bit of blue. This area is very watery blue and a little bit of orange coming up from a snout here. And little orange and green, or yeah, greenish blue. There is this color down under his lip here and down under here. So while I have that on my brush, maybe I'll, I'll do those parts. And then we'll go in with blue, very watery blue, and then we'll go in with oranges, oranges. Okay. All right. So while I still have that pink on my brush, I'll go in in this little area, kind of just let that flow there. And he would have a little bit of a shadow under his big chin here. So let that be very watery. Just flowing around. That's bigger than what I wanted it to be. So we'll do that. Maybe a little up here. Okay. Let's go in and put some blue in these spaces here. <laughs> doesn't look like doesn't look like much right now, does it? It's, there's always that point in the painting, isn't there? We talk about that every time. There's a point in the painting where I'm like, hmm, what am I doing? <laughs> What's happening here? Okay, so I've put blue on my brush and a lot of water. Okay, I'm going to go in and just flow some blue around. Almost, almost all water. Just like that, just as flowy, just a hint of blue, okay? A little bit more over here, a little over here. Now these are the, this is the way I'm interpreting this. You feel free to do your thing. If you feel like you wanted to color it all in exactly, you know, a whole big color on the tummy, you know, you do whatever you feel like. This is just the way I'm, I'm interpreting this little guy. Okay, just light blue here. Very, very light. All right, and then really, there's not a whole lot up here. Maybe a tiny bit up in the ears. Those are mostly orange though, in my estimation. Maybe down here in the chin area. Okay. Okay. 
now orange. The orange. Okay, we're going to do a lot of water on our brush again. And we're going to go in in this area. Now, we've talked about warm colors and cool colors mixing and make brown a lot of times. Um, orange and blue, they would make brown. Mm, sometimes a purple would too. So even though I think, you know, purple is a cool color, but it does, we have a lot of red in our purple here. So that's kind of a, a mixed bag there, but you don't want to mix is what I'm saying is you don't want to mix the orange and the purple and blue very much. So it will turn brown. All right. Now going in here, it's nice and bright. Just a little bit of here, a little over here. Just flowing it around. Maybe a little under there. Okay, and then this little spot right here had a little bit of an orange flare up. But really, I like, I'm going to put a lot of water on there and see if it'll make a little starburst area there. I want it to be like an interesting little spot. Well, going into a weekend, sounds like maybe we have a, a, some respite coming from this COVID thing, but I don't know. It feels like the weekends are the hardest for me because I they just feel like the same as <laughs> every other day. <laughs> what do you guys do on the weekends that's different? I guess some people are working at home. That would be different on the weekends. Okay. All right. Maybe a little bit of orange on his tummy, just to pull that all together. Basically, what's going on? That's what we got. Just flowing it around with water. We got the color on. <laughs> That's that's the color okay so now we'll go in and do the eyes and the nose and the little mouth area and maybe a little bit of details um i'm going to use my small brush for that if you don't have a small enough brush or if you don't have a pointy brush like this see how it's pointy um you can use a sharpie for a while there, I was just using Sharpies all the time on these videos because I didn't want to mess up, mess you guys up. So I am going to be brave and use my, my um, brush here. And we're going to go in with black. And I think around my eye areas here, they're going to be pretty dry at this point. So I'm going to go in. Oops put my arm in there. So I'm going to turn it so I'm not touching the, the wet. Okay, so the eyelid is basically outlined in black like that. And then some lines for a little eyelid area. Okay. After that dries a bit, I'm going to go in with a little bit of water and make it gray um, in between those lines, just for a little bit of a eyelid. Okay. Then the bottom eyelid is outlined very, very lightly. Just a super light touch. Okay. 
Now, the outside rim of his eyes, we haven't put color in, so, but we don't want to put black. So only put black on this pupil area. And I did leave some spots that need to stay white. If you have a white paint pen, you can use your white paint pen at the end and color that in. But if you don't have a white paint pen, just leave a little bit of those spaces white those little reflective eyeball spaces. And do this nice and slowly. You don't need to rush. We're not in a hurry. Okay, there's an eyeball. All right, the cute little eyelashes go off the side. These are just a flick of the brush and as you get to the end of the eyelash, you want to lift so that it's not a thick um, line with a thick end. You want to have it be a little bit of a, a lift at the end. So see how I do? You go and then lift. That way it's smaller at the tip. Yeah? Okay. We'll go in and put color on the top, on the, around the iris in a minute. Okay, let's do the black on this side now. So the bottom lid has a very light line. And then the top lid. Slowly, slowly, nice and slow, nice and precise. And we've got some eyelid lines. Okay, and then black in the pupil. Leaving some white on those reflection spots. Okay. Shirley Craver says that she's going to start using a Sharpie because she's had lots of problems using black paint. Oh, yeah. I don't blame you, Shirley. I totally do it a lot. And the white paint pen really helps as well if you have one of those. These white, these black, the black just does want to, it's kind of like, um, you know, how the, the world works. If there's a little bit of darkness, it kind of like invades, takes over. <laughs> so if a little bit of black goes into this purple, it's just there's not a whole lot you can do about it, right? I get it. So yeah, using a marker, a Sharpie, is a, is a clean bet. All right. Oh, and eyelashes. Lifting from the very corner and then up. Cute little eyelashes. Yeah. There we go. All right. This area should be dry enough now. Let's do his nose. And his nose could have a little reflection on it too. This, that's the one part of his body that would probably be wet, right? So you can leave a little white spot there or use your, your um, white marker, paint pen. And we're just gonna slowly fill that in. Cute little rectangle nose. Okay. Now down in here, if it's dry, if it's not dry yet, do not go in with your black pen or your black um, paint. It will just disperse. But if you, if it is dry, just go with, go for it, nice and slowly, and go along those lines. This is a nice. Simple, straightforward lines. Oh, he's so sad. <laughs> oh, I think it's just the way they are built, but it sure does look a little bit of sad. Okay, and then a little bit of lines just for just for fun. Put a little hair in their ears. A little black 
black hair in the ear areas. I'm going to turn my paper because I have wet paint there, so I don't want to put my hand in it. I'm going to go up and over like that. A little bit of hairy ears like an old man. <laughs> I saw a video of somebody doing haircuts in the park the other day, and they were using a lighter on these men's ears, and they were like putting the fire, and it was just like singeing all those little hairs. I should try that with my husband. <laughs> that part probably smelled real bad. That probably smelled bad. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> it's probably gross to talk about. Sorry, everybody. Okay. All right. The last thing we need to do is put in the color around the irises, but I don't want to do that until it's very dry. So I'm going to tell you about next Thursday. Did we ever figure out what the date was next Thursday? The Not Thursday. 23rd? Uh, oops. Can you flick up a calendar? Anyway, next Thursday, we're going to do a Zoom call and we're going to paint this painting. We're going to do um, it on canvas and with um, acrylic paint. And we'll be taught, we'll talk, and we'll laugh, and we'll talk, get to know each other. Um, if you are signed up on Patreon, I think the subscription for that is $25 a month. Um, and we do these paintings every month. Um, if you only want to do the April painting, just this one, and you don't want to do May and June, July, um, then it's just $25. You just direct message me and we'll just make it happen. Um, there's a list of supplies. I'm working on getting a kit formed um, for these, but at this point I can't do that because of Corona. So um, it's what? The 23rd? The 23rd, April 23rd, um, next Thursday. Um, so there's a list of the supplies you'll need. It's just some acrylic paints. If you have, if you go online um, on Amazon, there's some, I'll, I'll post some suggestions. There's some um, sets like this uh, that are about $20. Like this one was $19, I think. I used this um, just to test it out on this painting last night. I could probably do five paintings with this set. Um, yeah, so if you buy this, um, you'll have what you need to, to do several months of paintings. Um, and you can also buy canvases in bulk as well. Um, and if you want to, you know, if you have family members, you have a whole family that wants to paint, it's just $25 for everybody. Usually it, when I do a painting party, they're usually $35 a, a person, um, but that's in person and I have all the stuff and the canvases and everything. But if you have family members and everybody wants to paint together or, you know, you want to get on Zoom with a bunch of your friends and paint with me? Um, well, that would be separate. So if you're all in one house, you know, jump on. Um, but if you have some friends that you think this would be fun to do and we could all get together and paint and talk and laugh, um, let me know if you want to do that. Okay? Uh, that's next Thursday at, I think, what did I say, 8 o'clock Central. That way, people in California, it's 6 o'clock. It's kind of dinner time, but um, it gets really late for the East Coast people if we move it any later. Anyway, your, so, your, yeah? Your dad says that he loves watching your videos. Oh, my dad. Hi, dad. I saw a video of... <laughs> I was showing my boys all this video. <laughs> this, this dad who's doing like a... Every time they say um, Dadasaurus, he turns into a, a, a dinosaur, you know, and he goes crazy and like is like putting his face in cake and crazy stuff. And the little girls, you know, they're like teenagers, they're laughing so hard. And that's how, that's how it was in my house too. We would just laugh and laugh at my dad. He would do the same thing over and over and we would still laugh. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. Anyway, so.
so cute. Hi, Dad. Okay, so around the irises, we're just going to put a little bit of blue and maybe a little bit of pink. So I'm going to take a little blue on my pen or my daily bop. And we'll put a little bit of blue in there, just hints of color. We don't need to have them exact. Sometimes when they get exact, it looks more like a, I don't know, like a, I don't know. <laughs> I like it when it's not. <laughs> My son's looking at me like, and what were you guys? <laughs> <laughs> Help me, JP. What am I trying to say? <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right. A little bit of pink, a little bit of blue. I guess you don't want to put too much pink in there. He looks a little bit like he has pink eye or something. But there we go. All right. Cute, right? Oh, and we are going to put a little bit of water on the eyelids just to make this look a little bit more gray. Yeah. Like that. Fun. All right. Maybe he needs a little bit of eyebrows. Maybe that'll look make him look a little more like curious. Oh no, that looks more like he's mad. <laughs> Placement is everything, I think. Oh, let's see. Looks like he's going. Mm. <laughs> All right. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed making your funny little Boston Terrier. Uh, I'm thankful that you hopped on with me. I think it's fun that we all get to do this together. I know a lot of people are watching um, at different times and different from all different places. I know um, my mother-in-law in Japan's watching my parents in minnesota are watching so those are fun so those are the most important people right um but people from all over the place so and at different times and that's okay you don't need to be on at all time you know at the at this time but it is fun to like be able to talk and ask questions but really truly like whenever you're watching however you're watching i'm thankful that we get to do this together that you're exploring beauty putting beauty in the world um, honing a skill, something that maybe you didn't ever know you'd want to do. But here we are. And um, a lot of the, you know, you're showing me, there, you're sharing me, sharing with me your pieces. And my goodness, I mean, you're doing really well. It's exciting to watch that progress and, and turn into something that you didn't even know you wanted it. So, um, yes, if you're interested in painting this springtime floral bike painting let me know um, and sign up on patreon or dm me and other than that you have a good weekend grace and peace and wholeness to you and your households <laughs>